Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the evolution of consciousness. And what does that really mean? It means that we are spiritually evolving beings that are a consciousness, that we're not just contained in the body, but consciousness itself is something that includes the body and expands beyond it. And that's exactly going to be the topic of tonight's show, the confinement and the expansion of consciousness as we talk about out-of-body experiences. And my guest tonight, Louis Monaro, Luis Monaros. Yes. Wrote a beautiful book called Demystifying the Out-of-Body Experience, and he's part of the International Academy of Consciousness, which is located here in New York and around the world at 55 West 21st Street. They have free classes on how to achieve these out-of-body experiences the first and third Wednesday the first and third Wednesday of, of each month. Of each month, and that's, um, their website is... IACworld.org. Right. So let's go into out-of-body experiences. Sure. For, I know you're a pra- you've had these exp- How many have you had in your lifetime? Oh, oof. I don't know, 500, 600. Like, is it once a week or...? Um... Yeah, just about. And really, I started when I was 12 years old, so, you know... 25 or so years of out-of-body experiences, yeah. So you, when you first had your first out-of-body experience, you, you didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know that there was a name for them or techniques. I just had it, really. But isn't it true a lot of people who have these spontaneous, they may think they're dead or something. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 yeah. and what makes them think that they're not? <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, probably at the moment they are not really sure. And that, right. that surprise is really what causes them to come back to the body, you know, uh, in, in a matter of a few seconds. Right. Probably in my case, just because I was a teenager and so young, uh, I didn't really think much about them. I really didn't see the connection or the use or the benefit at that time when I was 12. Mm-hmm. So. Well, you know, I'm so excited about this because I've had out-of-body experiences. And actually, I was aware that the body was still breathing. I was aware of being out of the body. Right. And so I, you talk about the silver cord, which connects this out-of-body conscious. But, but I didn't see any cord. But the, the cord was the awareness of my connection to the body. Would you say that or would you say this? Um, you know, actually a lot of people when they are outside the body because we're not looking for the cord, sometimes yeah. we don't see it. Is there really a cord or there is the is. cord awareness itself? No, no, there is a cord indeed. There is are a cord. Are you sure? Actually, yes. let, let me even tell yes. you this. I don't know if I'm already corrupting everybody no, from okay. the first Corrupt segment. No, it's okay. Corrupt okay. But look, out, when you leave the body, your astral body can go through anything that is physical. So, right. But you won't go across yourself. So you can, with one hand of your astral body, you can grab the other arm and you can inspect yourself and you realize that you are complete, let's put it this way. So where the corruption comes in is that if you want, and you know, you viewers at home (laughs) as well, you can leave your body and you can reach back and grab the cord. You can? (laughs) Yes, you can. So again- And do what with it? Confirm that it's there, more than anything. Where is the cord? It attaches to the back of your head here. But it's- Get ready to be surprised, because obviously in the physical reality, we don't have anything. But you can actually feel it with you your... You can feel it. You can so feel your it. your out-of-body body is a sensing body. Indeed. It can feel. It can it feel. It can see and actually... It can, it can feel, hear, smell. Well, I do remember out-of-body, and, and, you know, I've read a lot about it, and said, oh, there's a wall there. I'm going to go through the wall. And, you know, I right. felt the density of yes. the wall. Yes. I felt it different, but I willed myself through the wall. Yes. It, it, and I felt, I did feel something, you're right. Yeah, and, and you know, and uh, sometimes we feel objects less dense and more dense, and sometimes some of the properties of the objects come into play, but a lot has to do with how, with, with how much dense energy we went outside the body. And then it seems that we are a little bit denser and we make a little bit more contact with uh, physical matter, Uh and sometimes we don't. We are super light and we go through things like air, really. So you can do this at will now, huh? I wouldn't say at will, Uh Noah, but you know, you already have practiced it a lot, and it's like a sport. The more you practice it, the greater your batting average. I mean, I know so in this speak. book you talk about the many ways that people... Doing, but let's just yeah. talk about a few, like... Uh, okay. Um, for me, it's first uh, realizing I'm lucid in a dream. Okay. Like, I had... La- last out of body, I had... I was running down a hill in the dream. Yeah. And it's a hill that I've run down before. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm dreaming. And with that, as I was running, I started to float out 
of the body. Yes, and, and, and actually that's a very good method. Yeah. From lucid dreams, having out-of-body experiences, even something that you know the viewers will appreciate, if you find yourself in a lucid dream or in any dream uh -huh. and you become a little conscious, instead of just changing the dream, which we can do, of course, mm -hmm. uh, say the following, I want to stop the dream. Uh, and the moment that you say, I want to stop the dream, instead of the scenes changing and you being at the beach or wherever you wanted to go, the images start to fade away and you find yourself many times floating close to the ceiling or close to the wall, really most of the times in your bedroom outside the body. Oh, wait, so you say, I want to stop the dream? Yes. You can say that? You can say that. I had no idea. That's amazing. <laughs> you can say that. And look, maybe the first time that uh, you guys try it or the second time, we end up waking up inside the body because we're so used to the fact that awareness means wakefulness mm. or physical wakefulness but by the third fourth time the images just fade away and you are outside your body aware because the other way that i've noticed okay i'm lucid i mean i realize i'm dreaming and in that i decide to go somewhere like visit a friend or go right. and that's another way where i start to that's another but way the, it, there's actually a sensation of lifting off the body, it's a, it's a, and you talk about, yes. talk about that a little, because I think that's really important. Yes, actually, there are a lot of different sensations yeah. that people feel. Some of them are very clearly a lifting sensation, you know, as you lift the body, mm -hmm. but other sensations, and that probably a lot of people might have felt already, is, let's say, a vibration inside your body. You're sometimes woken up in the middle of the night with this vibration, and from these vibrations, you end up outside the body. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel that you're falling, 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 yeah. or like a dreaming that you're falling, falling. And sometimes we wake up with a little jerk, but sometimes this falling uh, helps us to regain awareness and we find ourselves outside the body. Wow. Also sounds in our ears, it can be very high loud. Pitch sounds, yeah. yeah, like a high pitch, but sometimes also they might be more like a, like a jet engine or like a, mm. you know, like a zzz, very loud or a dry sound, oh, like really? a pack. I haven't pack. heard that. That's so it, it varies. In, in the book, uh, there is a section where we did like a very big survey of the percentages of people that would describe one sensation versus another sensation, another oh. sensation. Now, yeah, so, no, but part of that is you talk about in the book how to um, um, practice yes, the energetics. How, exactly, yeah. how to activate your energies yes, to yes. induce this vibratory yes. condition so as from here to have an out-of-body experience. How would I, uh, just go through that quickly. Yeah, sure. yeah let's do it. What you do is basically almost as if you're going to do a meditation, you want to be undisturbed. Yes. Whether sitting, lying, or, you know, standing up, mm -hmm. you start to feel your energies. And maybe the key word here is feel. Try to feel your energies and start running them through your body from the head down to your feet, mm -hmm. then from the feet to the head. And you keep on doing this sort of like up and down movement and controlling you're it every time more. actually exercising your etheric body. You're getting exactly. an etheric workout. You are basically, you know... Um, recovering the functionality of your energy muscles, so to speak. Right. Because really what happens with them is because of lack of information, they're a little rusty. Right. They, this is I really mean, it. The other thing you say is that we, um, we do this every night. We are... Um, we know, disconnect every everybody's night. Everybody's doing an out-of-body experience pretty much every night. They just don't exactly. remember Exactly. What we see, what we observe, is that everybody disconnects from their body every night How do you a few inches. That? Well, when you are outside the body, you see other people, you know, oh, outside their body. You know, I've never seen any. How do uh, why? Go and try it. Be, you know, in our, in our classes, we actually say, don't believe in anything, not even in what we are saying, yeah, yeah. but experiment. So you see so other people doing see, their, I mean, do you like say hello? Do you hang out? No, the, uh, most yeah. people are unaware, unconscious of this. They're just simply basically sleeping, but disconnected maybe three, five inches above their physical body, and, and they do that and every you, night. And only out of body, you can see them out of their body. In it, on, unless somebody has clairvoyance. Right. And then, yes, they can see the non-physical reality while they are inside. Which is one of the benefits of practicing this is to develop your clairvoyance, your clairaudience, yeah. your, you know, it's, yes. it's realizing that we as human beings are much more equipped to investigate realms of consciousness than we've been conditioned to believe. Exactly. Yeah, that's why yeah. I call this program New Realities, because I want people to know how great they are, yeah. how expanded, how yeah. uh, possible 
they are to um, be all they can be beyond the limitations we've been taught. Yeah, you're absolutely yes. right. You know, sometimes I see people in, uh, you know, conferences or things mm -hmm. and they introduce themselves with their profession. Like, for example, I am uh, an architect. Mm -hmm. And yes, you studied architecture and of course you're an architect, but we are much more than that. He is much more than that. Right. He is much more than just simply, you know, a, a male person or a Westerner or, uh, you know, just a physical body. We are all so much more and the out-of-body experience, you know, can verify that for us. No, absolutely. But, you know, of course, we are now like one paradigm ahead of mainstream science that says yes. consciousness is contained in the brain. Right? Exactly. But, you know, there was just this big story in the cover of Newsweek uh, by this yes. neurologist who had a near-death experience and experienced total awareness when he was unconscious, in a coma, where there's no way he could have anything. So science is starting to come around and saying there, consciousness is yes. exists beyond. But yeah. how can we prove it to those people who aren't so open or is maybe not possible to prove? You know, I would say that the research on near-death experience helps a lot because you see people that, you know, they have not studied anything like this and they mm -hmm. just simply, because of this... Uh, you know, traumatic event, they find themselves outside their body mm -hmm. and they can say things or they can see things, sorry, that th we can confirm afterwards that there is no other way in which they would have, have access to that information. Right. And the same thing happens with the out-of-body experience. You can have an OBE, go and see something physical that is happening, come back and then, you know, verify it. Right. We actually have an activity that is called a projective field. It's a course, but it's also research, really where we put about 60 people in a ballroom of a hotel and they're all lying down trying uh -huh. to have an out-of-body experience. Wow. And they have to go into our, another room in the hotel. In their that out of body. Outside their body uh -huh. that is locked. And there is an auditor there that has nothing to do with the IEC, with the Academy wow. of Consciousness. So he is there to certify that nobody physically went into the room. He is the only one with the key. That's amazing. What happens? Well, what happens is people go. There is a computer that presents a random image. They have to see it. They go back and they write a report saying I saw X. And we have already had results with really? that. Really? Yes. Ha how many people were able to add a body at a project? You know, we have done that experiment several times. Or actually, in a lot of uh -huh. cities in the world, Madrid, Los Angeles, Rio de Janeiro, etc. And it varies from from uh, like event roughly, to event. Roughly, um, I would say, uh, I actually don't have the numbers, no, but, but it, uh, it would 50. probably be about two or three people out of the 60 they're able, they're able to, to do, do it. that. Because yeah. I heard about an out-of-body conference that was happening in the Great Pyramid. You know, if you can get there, you can be part. You and can they, participate, and, yeah. And they gave a certain date and everyone was going to show up in the yeah. King's Chamber at the Great Pyramid and, you know, just connect with each yeah. other. I mean, so, and by yeah. the way, this, uh, you know, when you do the research and everything, you need a lot of repetition to get these results. But spontaneously, if you have affinity with somebody yeah. else and they also do out-of-body experiences, this happens more often. Because what do you mean? If you have, if, so if you're in a relationship with somebody? No, even or, with friends. Uh -huh. Because I, with my colleagues, have had several out-of-body experiences where we are both outside the body. And we can communicate, and really? afterwards we can remember, and we call each other, and yeah, look, we were talking about A, B, C, wow. D. Wow. You so, know, but this, I mean, you have a school and the International Academy for Consciousness, and they are, but this is a spiritual tradition in so many cultures around yes. the world. And not only that, it, it is the spiritual practice um, as a foundation of evolution. What, what I mean is I took a courses with this uh, teacher, this channel, Ramtha, and he said that he first left his body um, when he was wounded. So he had this out-of-body experience and that like scared him, but then he tried every day to have it again and he had it again and yeah. he, he kept having it until he was able to, at will, send his consciousness where he wanted to go. And then he said he was able to bring his body to where his consciousness was. So some people talk about building the etheric body or the golden body or the rainbow body by using these techniques and yeah. you actually build yeah. another vehicle that then can house consciousness and it becomes a physical um, Merkaba for traveling through the dimensions and achieving immortality. That's really the what the science of out of body is about. It, it's, it's exactly, it's a progression. But it's have a you progression. heard about that? Yes, Building yes. the rainbow? I, I mean, have. that's the true purpose 
of this. It's yeah. not. Um, I, I would say I it, that's exactly like a, a big part of the purpose: the refining, the sophistication of the soul, and through the art of party experiences, we get there. Now, necessarily trying to be physical in the non-physical realities. That, I would say, is not the purpose. That, what do you mean? To, be, to build a new body? Yes, because you don't need to. That, to a certain extent, gives me an idea of the person maybe having a little bit still the physicalist paradigm in their mind. No, I know what you mean, but the, the idea of the hermetic traditions, and this is just what I've said, is to, to be the master of the body, mind, and spirit. So when Absolutely. You can, when you could build the golden body, you achieve a sense of immortality. Yeah. But really, we are already immortal. Well, that's this is, true. This is something interesting. That's you leave the body and you realize the soul is immortal and nothing nothing harms, you know, the, the OB condition. No, I agree with that. But part of building the immortal body is that you get off the wheel of reincarnation. Mm -hmm. So you can build this. And we, of course, you've been working on this lifetime. Yeah. But once that body is built, you um, be you transcend that yeah. plane. I mean, that's one idea. Yeah, and actually, you know, in the book, we talk about that, you about do. what is the process in which people, you know, um, how could I say, are able to learn and take advantage of all the human experiences that mm -hmm. we can gather and learn from here, and how afterwards, you know, we can disconnect fully and for the last time. It takes a while, but, no, we're, but this is part of the for process. A while. Yeah, of we've course. We've been doing it lifetimes, haven't we? We have, we have. And, and so, you know, the other side, I mean, we get back to the out-of-body thing strictly. Um, sometimes, and it's happened to me, you're out of your body and then you're half in and you're half out and you can't move. And, yes. <laughs> and it, it's, it is scary. I mean, it, what, it can be. <laughs> well, yes. I've had, it's like, oh my God, I'm half in and half yes. out and I can't get back. And, and so <laughs> you have to... I don't even know how I get back in, but talk about that. Yeah, sure. And, and look, this used to happen to me when I was a teenager as well, and I would be scared when I was a teenager. So I understand yeah. you perfectly. Now, basically what happens is, usually when we sleep, we disconnect this couple of inches, but on some nights we disconnect a lot more. Uh -huh. And then we basically lose the energetic connections to the muscles. Oh, so yeah. we cannot move the physical body. Well, because we're not in the body. We're no longer in the yeah. body, and because we really disconnected further. Now, we have started to come back in the morning, and in essence, what has happened is we have woken up before the two bodies have realigned and before we can move the physical puppet, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we stay calm, relax, in a matter of 20, 30 seconds, the two bodies finish aligning and we can move again. What happens is that I know these 20 seconds, first of all, they feel like an eternity. <laughs> yes, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, and but, we become surprised, you know, scared. But uh, if you do get used to that, it's like, yeah, when you do, re you're right, relaxing into it, just you just settle yeah. back in. You know, another thing I want to talk about, and this is a beautiful manual, it's a beautiful um, course of study for, for achieving your own out-of-body awareness. This, Indeed. This book. And, and this is a very big intention of the book, you know, uh, for people to be able to develop, you know, and of our classes, for people to be able to develop the skill on their own. Yes. Because we see that it's something that anybody can develop, you know, right. it, like anything in life is a matter of receiving some instructions, training, and the capacity goes on develop. But one thing I have to say that I didn't find, I, of course, I didn't finish the book, but so it might be. Yeah. But it's the alter, there's an altered state of consciousness that happens in the outer body. So we're in a normal, let's say, beta state. When you achieve the astral projection, you're no longer in the same framework of, of consciousness. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. You know, certainly we cannot yeah. measure it anymore, you know, based on yeah. the activity of the brain, you know, like yeah. you know, beta or alpha. But when you're outside the body, you can be on, on levels of awareness that are very similar to the right now, where yeah. you have the same level of control, of memory, of everything. Mm -hmm. You can be in levels of awareness where you are a little bit less than right oh. now, and it may look dreamlike, and this uh -huh. happens a lot. Yes. But what yes. is interesting yes. is we can also be in levels of awareness that are greater than the right now, and you perceive better, you remember better uh, things. For me, and maybe it's I need to practice more, but it's always like very altered state. It's like 
being high or all, I, it's not a normal state yeah. of awareness. I'm perce because perception is different, you know? It, it, it can be. Again, it, it depends on the awareness. Really, awareness is what ends up determining the perception, the interpretations, the control that we have. Oh, so talk about uh, awareness ethics. when you say awareness. Yeah, you know, at the, at, when we are in the physical body and we are awake, we tend to keep our awareness pretty stable. Right. You know, we basically right. always perceive the same unless we have, you know, right. consumed anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah. usually it's pretty stable. I understand. But the moment that you step outside the body, you no longer have the, the influences of the physical body. Uh -huh. So because of that, the level of awareness can be just as high as what we have right now, but it can be less. And this is what I was calling intermediary. Sometimes we are in certain experiences where we are not really sure if this is a dream a lucid dream or an out-of-body experience, and I'm sure that this has happened to most people that are seeing. And it also can be much more expanded. And it also can be much more expanded. Yeah. And what is interesting about that, giving you a reference, is that, you know, if we think right now about our dreams, most of our dreams seem crazy. You know, we don't really know why we're there and what we're doing, and we think that right now everything is very coherent and congruent. But when you are outside the body with a greater level of awareness right. than the one you have right now, and at that moment you think about your physical life, your physical life seems crazy, <laughs> seems incongruent. Sometimes yeah. and you realize much easier, for example, I got on the car, I live in LA, so, or you get on the subway and it takes you half an hour to get somewhere and then you are there, and then you think during this half hour that I was you know, in transit, what was I thinking about? And then you think, look, I cannot remember not even one thought right. that I had. Well, some people so. say we're actually always dreaming, but the conscious mind is so um, dominant that we are not really remembering our dreams, but the dream is happening as we speak. That could be one way of, you know, <laughs> of, of, of thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but I also want to ask you about this double trap, like going and meeting people. You also talk about sure. uh, see animals have astral projections. Talk about the animal yeah, thing. Yeah. Yes. Animals, usually when you leave the body and you see especially animals that are more closer to humans, like, you know, like domestic cats. animals. Exactly. And more cats than dogs. So it's cats more seem to cats be more than psychically dogs. aware. Most of the times as they are sleeping, mm -hmm. you can see many times several of them floating a little bit above their physical body like humans do, like what we were describing before. You can, in some rare instances, find a dog or a cat, you know, aware outside his body. Uh -huh. But this, you really, I don't want to give the impression that this happens all the time. You really need to have a lot of experience and sometimes just get lucky mm -hmm. to find you know, uh, somebody like that aware. Well, the other thing I've talked to Wagner, or Wagner, one of your associates, talked yeah. about, you can actually go to worlds where there are creatures and animals and ecologies that don't exist here. Yes. Have you been there yes. to those worlds? Yes. What, to, to, other, to other dimensions yes. or tell parallel me about worlds. Your yes. Look, um, absolutely. You go to see realities where sometimes what you think that looks like a plant is having a very clear conversation. Does that happen to you? Tell yeah. me your experience, yeah, particularly. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, um, you know, many, many. But for example, I remember this specific plant yes. that, uh, you know, basically said, look, I'm not a plant. I know it looks ah. to you like a plant because this is the reference that I had from physical life, mm -hmm. pretty much. Uh, but no, after a, after a while, you know, after it told me this, it basically lifted and flew away the same way we do outside the body, that, mm. you know, with our astral body or psychosoma, so we can So there's so many dimensions fly. of reality. It's incredible. There are many. The other thing I wanted to talk many. about, because we're almost out of time, and I talked to Albert Taylor, you know his book, Soul yes, Traveling, yes. he's been on the Albert show. Albert Taylor, sure. He talked about astral sex, where yeah, okay. when two people are <laughs> out, they seem to engage, since there is a physicality. Have you heard of that? Yes. Have you engaged, yes. has it happened? But Yes, but let me tell you, it's not, I know the concept of astral yeah. sex, it's not like the sex like we know it here in the right. physical reality, right. but really it's more than that, because you blend in with the other mm. person and with the intimacy with the memories it's really being much more naked than the physical nakedness that's, if if that makes no, that's sense that's beautiful and it's, yeah. it's usually with someone you know right oh yes with somebody that you have a lot of affinity with because uh -huh, yeah. they agree to astral and you would you meet and yeah it's a a communion of the souls if you will uh, it's a blending of the astral you bodies know, more than anything once this study really becomes mainstream once people are aware that they're more than just their limited consciousness so much opens up 
yes. in all realms of human existence. The yeah. arts can flourish in new ways. Yeah. Music, um, creativity starts to yeah. unfold. Science, and you know, science, and especially a very big thing is humanity. Yeah. Because sometimes we treat each other, you know, uh, so much like a resource, you know, like uh, this is my Come provider, yeah. this is the, my client, and you know, just a very financial I sometimes see what you perspective. Mean. So the person yeah. I'm looking at there is not just my accountant. Exactly. They are. Uh, they are uh, another transcendental being in another soul in development yes. with difficulties with you know spirit guides that are trying yeah. to help them with uh, problems and, and you know you understand other people better and you want as well to right. try to relate better to them to help them more thank you thank you yeah. for that um yeah no, I, I was just going no, to no, mention no, in the book yes. i have actually several experiences of assistance because this is a very mm, big thing yeah, leaving the me. body to help other individuals yeah. and then several experiences of assistance where you see the person you know okay. helping them you yes. know and, and relating in a different yeah. way to them so we're almost out of time can you just tell me how you leave your body so what's your practice and, and we'll, <laughs> my uh, technique yeah, for yeah. sure this one that i was mentioning is one of the more basic techniques yes. that i use and another one is one that i have here in the book that is called the carbon dioxide technique it's a breathing technique oh tell me about that well in that one what you try to do is you try to increase a little bit the concentration of carbon dioxide in your body uh -huh. and that basically has the effect of shutting the body down, putting it to uh -huh. sleep, uh -huh. basically, while your consciousness, you know, escapes uh, in awareness. So I use first, that one quite a bit. And so what happens? So you're sleeping, you do this consciously. I, I am breathing, you know, in that fashion. And then as I am doing it, this technique produces a very gradual exit. So little by little, I start to feel my body disconnecting, 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 as I keep and, on breathing and, in and that fashion. And then you're exiting from your chest? Well, no, I mean from the entire body. Uh -huh. the, sometimes I feel so more my hands first or and my then, legs first. And then, and, and then, and then I, uh, once I have separated maybe about a foot or so, I start to lose um, like the sensations of the yeah. physical body and the breathing. And then usually my extra physical, my non-physical sight appears, and I am seeing my bedroom, and I can you know. Uh, then afterwards go. We need to teach this in schools, in elementary schools. I agree, Alan. <laughs> thank you, Luis. My pleasure, and thank it. you for we'll, the opportunity. We'll, we'll do this again because we barely really started um, getting into the depth yeah. of the subject. Yeah. I've been talking to Luis Monaro and the author of Demystifying the Out-of-Body Experience, and it is a brilliant manual for realizing your human potential. I'm Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. If you want to reach me, email me at newrealities at earthlink.net or check my website, newrealities.com.